In this video, we're going to discuss the various ways of creating an appointment. This will include appointments for existing patients as well as for new patients. Now, I've already opened the appointment schedule page, which is where most new appointments are created. Now, there are actually two different options that you have here. One is the add new icon here towards the upper area of the page. And the second is to simply double click in an available time slot. Now in another video, we discussed physician work pattern, and that is what is represented here by the various color coding. Wherever you see a location name that has not been overridden by a patient name is an available time slot on that day for that physician at that location. So when you click a time slot, let's say I wanna choose one here at 2 p.m. on North End Outpatient on Wednesday the 23rd. I simply double click it. And as my new appointment dialog in, is invoked, you'll notice these four key fields at the top, the date, the provider, the time, and the location are all defaulting to the criteria that I wanted. And that is because I chose an available time slot based on the work pattern. Now, if I go back and click the add new icon, new appointment dialog opens, but notice here my date defaults to the current computer date not the date of the calendar I'm viewing. My time defaults to midnight and my location defaults to my primary location. So in clicking the add new icon as a user, I have all of these additional fields to validate. It's more clicking and typing and selecting, whereas clicking a time slot that is shown as available, all of those values will default. Other than those differences, the rest of the new appointment is the same. So I'm just going to go back to my time slot for North End Outpatient. Now notice here we do have the appointment type. It defaults to patient, but as we discussed in our schedule overview, you also have the ability of making others, which is your meetings. We're just going to stick with the patient appointments for now. And when I get to the patient name, I have several options available. The first appointment we're going to look at is going to be for an existing patient. So we know the patient's name is already in our system, meaning that there is a chart under patient register. As you've previously learned in other videos, Prognosis has an autocomplete master search here for the name, as represented by the data entry field and a binocular. So that means we can type in the patient's name. I'm gonna go ahead and type in Mark Ballas, and there he is. Of course, if his name had not come up, I can always click the binocular, which will invoke my patient search, and that allows me to, of course, expand my search criteria. Notice beside the binocular, I have an image of a patient. This corresponds to the current encounter as represented by my stethoscope. This is the patient that I have most recently been working on. So for instance, if I wanna go ahead and quickly book a follow-up appointment for that person, I simply click the current patient icon and notice how it defaulted to Miranda Presley. The encounter type will usually default to office visit, although that is a customized parameter that you can define whichever encounter type you prefer. However, you do wanna be in the habit of choosing the correct encounter type. Encounter type drives not only your schedule as far as the duration, but it also is going to have different behaviors for the physician as we will cover in applicable documentation videos. So it's very important to have a list of encounter types based on the types of patients you treat. For Mark, we're just gonna go ahead and leave it as an office visit. That automatically defaults my duration. Now I can overwrite it. If I know for some reason Mark's visit will take a half hour, I can change that. And all others will remain the default of 15. Now these other choices here on the right are disabled in the case of Mark, our case number pre auth and insurance. And the reason for that is I have chosen a patient who does not have a case open. The reason for the visit is free text or you have a master file search that accesses the chief complaints that you've defined under your HPI complaint master. So you can either choose a specific complaint or you can simply type it in. Now the format or the content of what you put in here is is very localized. Um, you can have whatever format you need, whether it's the specific complaint the patient has, their symptoms, the name of the procedure, the fact that it's a recheck or whatever. 
the combination of the encounter type and the reason together is what is going to tell the doctor at a glance why he's going into the exam room to treat the patient. So we're going to say Mark is just coming in for abdominal pain. Now at this point, I have all of the required information so I can simply click my schedule button. Since I have chosen an open time slot on my physician's work pattern, I am not going to get any errors. Now that I have Mark on the schedule, he is selected. In the lower left, I can review all of his patient level details. So while I'm booking the appointment, if I want to go ahead and verify demographics, update insurance, add notes or alerts, etc., I have my shortcuts. Now, all of these options are covered in the patient register series of videos. So I'm not going to go into them here. These are just shortcuts to those functions. Notice the status is tentative. There are multiple properties that can be customized by local preference with regards to the appointment scheduling module. One of those is with regards to self-confirming an appointment. Based on the setting of that property, which mine is, happens to be set at two days out, any appointment made beyond two days into the future is automatically set to tentative. Every appointment in two days or less will be automatically confirmed. And that is what populates the to be confirmed list. If you notice here in the upper left, the call list, which is covered in a separate video within this series, are appointments that need to be confirmed. Whether I'm going to call the patient or send them an email to do so is based on local preference. But that is what would then change my status to schedule. Notice at the top, I also have a message telling me what the copayment is. So while I am making the appointment, I can inform the patient, please remember to bring your copayment at the time of service. Now we're going to create another appointment and we're going to see how this message can be different. This time we're going to create a new patient who does not already have a chart and prognosis. Now for a new patient, you have the add patient icon here in the upper left. This is what we call quick register. The only mandatory fields as identified by the red asterisks are the name and date of birth. Now, as a practice locally, you can choose to make these other options mandatory as well. All of those details can be added after the fact, however. So we're going to just go ahead and register our patient, Mike Ross. Notice how this time my encounter type defaulted to new patient instead of office visit. That is because I am adding a new patient through the new appointment dialog. So the quick register workflow will automatically default to my new patient type. And we're just going to say that is to evaluate for new patient. Now this time, notice in the lower left again, I have my links to my patient chart if I want to go ahead and update that. Across the top, my message this time, instead of telling me the copayment, says patient does not have an insurance record. That is a clue to me that since there is no insurance, he may be self-pay, or I simply have not updated the insurance information. You also can have an indicator that the patient is already identified as self-pay instead of does not have insurance. So in that way, this status banner is very helpful at the front desk when processing a patient appointment. So those are the two ways of making an appointment on the schedule page. Now, the third way of booking an appointment is up here at the system level using the take appointment icon. The benefit of the take appointment icon is that it opens in an independent window. That means that you do not have to stop what you're doing in the background. So for instance, we just finished booking Mark Ballas's appointment. Maybe we had gone on to update his demographics. Miranda Presley came to check out and needs to book her follow-up appointment. Now, you'll recall in the other examples we just covered, we were actually here on the schedule page where you can only work with one patient at a time. The benefit here is we don't have to stop doing what we're doing with Mark, but rather just click the take appointment icon and notice how it already defaults to Miranda Presley because she's the last encounter that we were actually working on. Now, the trade-off here is that the work pattern is not automatically visible. So we do have to choose the search link down here in the lower left. And that is because you'll notice at the top here, we're defaulting to the current date at midnight. Now we will also have to verify the location. We're gonna go ahead and choose the clinic, but we're gonna leave it at midnight for the current date to invoke the search. 
Now at this level, you can just simply click the Find button and it will start searching with the earliest possible appointment. But notice at the top, we can filter it down by days of the week, hours of the day. So maybe Miranda is only available on Monday, Wednesday, or Thursday. And maybe she only prefers afternoons. So we can go ahead and choose from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and say find. And it gives us that availability. Now, if neither of those appointments works, we can click the find next. And notice how I get a scroll bar. And it's going to continue giving me two more choices each time until I find one that she wants. And it retains the earlier ones in case she changes her mind and says, let me take the earlier one. So I can go ahead then and choose that appointment for my follow-up. And then all I have to do at that point is put in the reason and save the appointment. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up a new appointment window here. Uh, and let's cover a few of these other features that we didn't touch on yet. Um, if you notice here, under the encounter type, we have our default duration, and then there are some icons. Uh, we have patient alert, patient notes, composed message, and then an existing appointment. Now, the alert notes and messages are covered in separate tutorials within the video library. Um, however, the impact here at making an appointment is when the icons are grayed out, then there is nothing populated within there. You can create one, however, by clicking on it. So if you decide at this point during your conversation with the patient, you would like to make an alert, you can certainly do that. If an alert already existed, however, like I'm going to just go ahead and change here to Olivia Pope, who has alerts present. Notice how it automatically launches so that while I'm making the appointment, I can view those and take the appropriate action. When an alert is present, the icon has an orange triangle. Same with patient notes. When it is colored, that means that there are notes present in case I need to read them or if I want to add one. Now, the composed message allows you to create an ad hoc email with regards to this appointment. Maybe it's a family member or another patient of significance. Uh, maybe the doctor's been waiting because it's an emergent situation and you want to let them know the appointment is done. You can go ahead and make the appointment to the doctor, already referencing that patient to let him know that the appointment is there. And the existing appointment icon is lit up, as we see in the case of Olivia, to let you know that there are already appointments for this patient that have not yet been arrived to help hopefully prevent duplicating an appointment. Now, we also have the case number, the pre-authorization, and the insurance. Now, again, case management is covered in a separate training module, but I'm going to go ahead and choose one of our patients, Daniel Hernandez, who has case management. Now, you'll recall from that particular training video, case management is with regards to accidents. So when we call up D Daniel's chart, it is going to populate the case number, letting us know that he has open cases. That gives us a drop down so that we can then associate the applicable case to this appointment. Maybe he's coming in to follow up for the motor vehicle accident. Maybe he's not. So if it is not related to the case, then we don't need to select it. But if it is, and there is automobile insurance also associated, it will also default the insurance. Another feature we have is the wait list. Now, the wait list does require that the patient have a future appointment, but let's say in booking Daniel Hernandez, the earliest appointment we have is October 13th, but he would really like to get in the week before. So as we are scheduling that confirmed appointment for the 13th, we're going to go ahead and click our waitlist button and say that his preferred date is actually on the 6th and maybe he needs to have it in the morning. So we'll go ahead and specify that he wants it between 7 a.m. and noon. And then once we add that to the wait list, the appointment is confirmed for the 13th, but notice down here, it also shows that he is waitlisted for the 6th and the early morning hours. So when we schedule the appointment, it does two things. And one, it will go to the confirmed appointment for the 13th, but then on our call list up here in the upper left, 
we have a waitlisted opportunity to go in and view waitlisted appointments. So when October 6 comes and if there's a cancellation, the office can quickly call Daniel and let him know that an earlier appointment has become available. Now, a few other scenarios we want to look at here with regards to creating an appointment has to do with errors when trying to book an appointment outside of a doctor's availability. We're going to look at a few different scenarios and most of these can be avoided if you choose the option of clicking in the time slot that is available for the appointment. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, that will help those top four fields default based on the doctor and location chosen for an available time. But let's say that we have just chosen the add new icon that is defaulting to midnight and we are trying to book it for Dr. Butler. But when we try to click the schedule button, we get an error up here at the top. In this scenario, it says provider is not available at this location during the selected time and date. Now, all these errors that I'm going to demonstrate now have to do with a mismatch of these top four fields. Either the date of service or the hour on that date is not available based on the predefined work pattern for the provider and location. So one of those four or a combination of those four fields would need to be changed. Now, if you know that it's after work hours, but the doctor has agreed to stay late, you can always overcome these errors by clicking the anytime option, and that will force the appointment whether the doctor is available or not. Another scenario would be if you are trying to book an appointment on the day when the clinic is closed. Even if it is a valid time, this time the error says this is a scheduled non-working date. So instead of looking at the physician's work pattern, the higher priority as discussed earlier is clinic level holidays, provider level vacations, and then work pattern. So since you chose a Saturday in this scenario, and that is a closed day for the office, it's not even going to look at a doctor's work pattern. Now again, if you try to click the anytime option to force the appointment, it will still take the appointment. Now another scenario would be when you are trying to book an appointment in a time slot that already exists. In this scenario, the error is telling us that the slot is occupied. So our physician is available, but he already has a patient for that hour on that day at that location. Now again, if we want to force this we can overload the slot by saying overload yes. So instead of clicking the anytime, which says, I don't care if my doctor's available, book the appointment anyway. Overload says, yes, I understand the doctor already has a patient for that time slot, but he's going to work this patient in, so I want to overload the slot. So you're going to say overload yes. Now that is property based as to how many overbookings you want to permit. So in review, when creating an appointment, you can specify whether it is a patient appointment, which of course would turn into an encounter or other, such as meetings. There are three options to create your appointment, using the add new icon, selecting an available time slot based on the predefined physician work pattern, or the take appointment icon, which will default to the current encounter and allow you to use the search and find next feature. Existing patients can be searched or direct data entered into the appointment dialog, whereas Quick Register allows you to enter a new patient using only the name, date of birth, and gender. When creating a new appointment, system alerts will automatically display as relevant to that patient's appointment. You also have the ability of forcing an appointment during hours when the physician is not scheduled, overloading a time slot, as well as searching through the physician's work pattern for the next available slot based on patient preferences. That concludes this video within the series. Please click the appropriate link below for your next step. If you'd like to take a quiz, you will receive your results in real time directly on the screen so that you can see how well you've done. If you answer incorrectly, the system will prompt you with the correct response. In addition, a confidential email will be sent to the education team 
to help us better serve you with our educational offerings. Second, advance to the next video within the series you're currently in. And finally, return to the video library main page. As always, feel free to contact us through the Resource Center or email with any additional questions or comments.